This is a radio show for people with problems. Home improvement problems, that is. And for people who want common sense guidance on how to build green and live a more sustainable lifestyle. Send an email or call into the show. The Mighty House crew is on the job. This is Mighty House. All right. We're back again, and we had a special request for the topic for today's show. And it is lead paint and lead safe practices. So... Uh, we're going to be talking about that. I want to first say thanks to the Niles Design District for uh, helping sponsor the show and uh, help put these out. You can always go to NilesDesignDistrict.com, and there's a little link in the, uh, in the box down below. So make sure you check them out, Niles Design District, and I want to say thanks a lot to them. Also, make sure you hit subscribe button and uh, click on the bell so that that way when we uh, post a new show, you'll be notified. You'll know. And since I'm on the wrong side, I'm talking with the wrong hand. So if you don't understand me, it's because this hand is off screen. And this one, you should be able to understand a little bit better. So today we're bringing in an expert to talk about lead safe practices. And he is um, EPA certified to teach this class. So um, let's see. He's over here, I think. Hey, uh, sir. Uh, yeah, sir. Hey, <laughs> Brian. Dude. <laughs> How How's you the remote doing? going? <laughs> Good. <laughs> you can tell, man, this, this place is a mess. And we've got a it lot is. of issues here. So we need to know how to watch out for lead, lead paint and uh, mm -hmm. kind of things that we might want to uh, do a quick search for. Just watch out for this extension cord that's hanging down right here. Yes. That's keeping the lights on for us. So just so you know. It might be outside my realm. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, no, it's, it's not. not. It's not. It's, it's not. right there. It's, it's right there. So that's Inside good. joke, but... It, it's it, not outside. It's not outside my yeah, home. That's right. <laughs> right. So, so yes, as you alluded to, yeah, I was uh, I was a, a trainer for the EPA and lead safe work practices, and yep. I did sit on the Illinois Lead Elimination Advisory Council, which is a part of the Illinois Department of Public Health, and we dealt with the prevention of childhood lead poisoning. Right. Uh, it's it's a bigger problem than a lot of people believe. Sure. Sure. So, it, and it and it's it's something that's not just a Midwest issue. Um, it happens a lot on the East Coast. And I think once you get more West and you get right. out to the Western states, they don't have as much of a problem with this until maybe you get to California where they've got some older homes again. But um, just still have them throughout the, the, the you know, the, the Arizona and all that. Any place where, again, aging housing stock, anything, correct. as we say, built before 1978. Right. And we'll get into that as we progress. So sure. we try to keep these kind of succinct. So let's just start right off the get-go with why does lead affect children okay so the biggest thing with lead is that it's it, lead is absorbed into the body when it's ingested in other words you cannot get it through your skin you must uh -huh. eat it or inhale it um when your child is growing their brain is in development up till about the age of six and when a child ingests lead it gets stored in their bones and as they grow the body says, okay, send me some, you know, minerals, whatever. And typically it's looking for iron. Right. And the body will send lead. And lead will then in turn short circuit the brain. So that's why for adults working with lead, it's not such the issue. Because, because everything's with, already been, you, you've already grown, you, everything's you've done. You've already grown, be. things like that. So parents who are remodeling a home, if they have children under six in the home, they need to be extremely careful mm -hmm. or guys like us that work in the trades. If you're working in older homes and you get full of lead paint dust, those clothes should never go directly into the house. You should undress elsewhere or in a garage, let's say bag your clothes and then get them directly into the wash. Right. Right. Lead's you... not this invisible floating thing that kills you. It is easy to manage. Sure. And it's, it's the dust more than the chips, correct? Yes. It is the dust more than the chips. Um, and then whether or not they're, you know, people ask, is there any safe level of lead in your system? And the answer simply is no. Right. Uh, there is no safe level of lead. I recently got tested some years ago. I say recently, then some years ago. I think it was three years ago. But I am currently at four micrograms per deciliter. Really? As an adult, that's not great. Right. But because my brain was fully developed, it should lead to little harm. Your wife might say something different about it being fully developed, but. Right. But I would agree with that. Too. 
<laughs> but there is some evidence that leads to the when the lead fails in your brain that it leads to Alzheimer's. So one of the first things that I tell people, even as adults that work in the trades and do a lot of remodeling, especially in older homes, you should, when you go your annual checkup and your annual blood test, get your blood lead level checked just so you know, not every year, but right. go find out. Sure. So, that picture, that Dutch boy, white yeah. head. Yeah. My father had a can of that. And when he was uh, a young man, he said that he was told he worked for a painting and plastering contractor. And when they had to go buy paint, they always brought a bucket of that white lead to mix with the paint. Sure. Because what, you know, what it did was made the paint flow better. It laid down better. It, it made it hold up and last longer. So it, it made it flexible. Sure. I mean, anybody that paints their house every year understands that, you know, if the paint doesn't flex with the expansion of the wood, it starts flaking and peeling. So by adding lead to it, it was, it managed to actually hold better. Uh, and it would just, you know, it just works. And that it was lead. That was lead being added to oil-based paints. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. I mean, the Greeks were goofy enough. They added lead to wine just to make it sweeter. <laughs> Yeah, which yeah. may have led to the end of the Greek Empire, right? And there's um, possible, the pictures, yeah. Danny, throw them pictures back up there a second, because they're really good. That want, one's fine. You the, want the, the alligator one, yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of your typical not you know non-maintained siding, right? That's really bad. That should have been painted years and years and years ago. But if you notice how it looks like alligator skin, how it cracks left, right, and up and down, yep. that's an indication of lead-based paint. You know, but it's not a guarantee that it's lead-based paint. So, but that's first sign when you see that type of breakup, then you kind of know what that is. Right. There's a good chance that there's lead in that paint, and you're going to want to be mm -hmm. watching out for it. So, to to make all that alligator and go away, you just take a big palm sander and start sanding it. Right. That is that how you no. get rid of it? No. Okay. No, Never that's <laughs> unfortunately how it was handled. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, lead's an element. This PB. Right. Um, it's heavier than most other things. Most people know lead from sinkers, from fishing, things like that. Sure. Um, but lead also sits in the soil and it's in it, it. Actually, if it gets in your garden, you can poison your family by growing vegetables in that same dirt. So we'll get into the lead safe work practices a little later, but that's exactly it. It's not that we're telling you to do things all crazy and spend thousands. There's just very simple steps to make it safe while you're working with those things. Right. Okay, so, next on your list. Where's it most likely to occur? It's most likely to occur in exterior paint, window like frames, yep. and trim. Right. So, again, a window, and a double-hung window is a great example of, because there were typically wood sashes and they expand and contract, you'd use lead-based paint on them so it would go with that. The problem you run into in the home now is that every time you raise and lower that sash, it rubs and makes fine dust. That fine dust then sits on the window sills or the floor in front of that window, and that's where you can actually get the problem. Or that. Right. Toddler's going to go up to the windows and looking out there. He's reaching up to look out because mommy or daddy are coming home. They have lead dust on their hands now. Right. And, and then they, they will. And we know children. Everything right. in their mouth. Right. That is actually one of the most dangerous scenarios right there. And everybody gets the thing, kids eat paint chips. Well, the most kids won't eat paint chips, but lead-based paint is very sweet. Right. So and if they go back to that picture again. Paint, yeah. Go back if over. You've got there. peeling. Yeah. Right. Right yeah. there. Yeah. If you got peeling paint like that, and they actually taste it, they'll work at it. They'll they'll mm -hmm. eat that, and that's a catastrophic poisoning. Right. That's something where they may really have to go to the hospital and be addressed right away to remove the lead. Um, but for the most part, if the paint is in great shape, if it's not peeling, it's easily fixed by encapsulation, which is put a coat of latex over it. Right. Well, it, and and that's what it's I did to fix, to fix mine. My, my son uh, was <laughs> in the same scenario right here where uh, the, the baseboard, the chair rail was starting to, to peel off a little bit. And you know how the mm -hmm. older homes, it's the chair rail and the windowsill are the same, right? Right over the radiator, everything's just that that wood, mm -hmm. essentially, uh, 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 just baseboard. So uh, his chair was bouncing right off of that, and uh, we we had the dust. We thought it was just regular paint, just uh, uh, repaint over it, uh, vacuum it up, that kind of thing. So we had to we had to do the whole thing. We had to test everything, do everything. <coughs> he, he had a he had a high score. 
Wow. Yeah, and and that's and it is scary. You know, what I mean, when you think about it, because you don't realize that the danger they're in because it it doesn't manifest itself. You don't get spots and lumps. You know, and unfortunately, you may not realize it till they're school age. Yeah. Right. You know, five or six years old, and they push the fire truck backwards only. Uh huh. Yeah. You know, I did that. I was just making that up. Um, <laughs> I got wrote up for that in kindergarten. Oh, I just nice. Like reverse for some reason. Uh huh. But so maintenance is a big thing, and another key to that is just daily cleaning. Uh, if you suspect you have lead-based paint, um, just a mixture of a little soap and water, and put a little white vinegar in there, uh, and wipe surfaces down. Lead's attracted to acid, so adding just a touch of white vinegar will help pick up lead. Uh, and then make sure you use disposable cloths, right? So you just wipe it all down, throw them away. It'll reduce it. Doesn't make it go away 100%. Um, but there's lots of things. When I sat on the Lead Advisory Council, we had a couple of doctors on there. And they also said that if your child has a poor iron diet, then they're more susceptible to absorbing lead. If they're on a higher iron diet or taking like a vitamin with an iron boost to it, they're less likely to get lead poisoning, eating three meals a day, which is the biggest reason why in the inner city they have uh, programs for breakfast and lunch. Yep. It's not all together about nutrition. It's A lot of it is just getting vitamins and minerals in kids because poorer kids live in po- older housing stock, more susceptible to it. I mean, some of the studies are <coughs> quite amazing how the overlays go with lead poisoning, poor school, poor education, and crime. Right. It, almost lays over the housing stock almost identically. It's, it's Correct. quite amazing. Correct. And the part of that home where the lead paint was used it wasn't in the, in the cheaper homes. They were used in the more expensive homes back, you know, in the 18, early 1900s. That's, sure. that they were, it was an expensive addition to do. So if you think, well, you know, my house wasn't a, you know, a, a, a rundown old house ever. It was always really nice maintained home. That, that doesn't matter. It, you know, if it was if it's a high quality home with high quality trim and, and levels and stuff like that, you got a good chance of, of possibly having that. Of having paint. it. Right. The Absolutely. High quality <clears throat> homes are the ones that are around now, the 120 year sure. old ones with the high quality ones. Sure. Absolutely. So lead based paint was technically banned in 1972. So production stopped. Uh huh. Nobody made it. But between warehousing, distribution, sales, it can be into homes as old as 1978. That's why when you receive the, the no, you know, your, your pamphlet, when you buy a house about lead and your risk of lead, it always references 1978. They had to pick a year to start it. Mm-hmm. If you live in a house built in 1978, there's a good chance you have no lead paint. Right. But you just kind of make the assumption there is, which leads us to the next step. Do you test your house for lead? No. No. Danny? There. Right. Yep. Oh, no, your your t- child tested positive, yes? Yeah. Yeah. We didn't so test So you had the, the house lead. tested for yeah. lead based paint for lead? Yeah. Right right after uh he got the test. We uh we went to the house and we, we bought a whole bunch of those sticks and po- uh, hit them with everything. Okay, so that's a good point. All right, so you use the lead check swaps. Mm-hmm. Those are the ones okay. we use there. You yeah. did not hire somebody to come in and do XRF testing. No, we hit the hot spots where he was because I mean he's a he's a toddler. He only goes to like three different places, so we hit okay. the hot spots and hit his toys. Um, so and those were the those were the trouble spots for him. But yeah, you're right. My whole house is is because we called the landlord, and he said, yeah, it'll it'll take. Well, you got to move out. <laughs> if I'm if I'm gonna do any of the lead stuff, you got to move out, and you you probably yes. won't be able to come back because your lease will be up. <laughs> oh, nice. And- and your rent will be doubled because now the house is safer. Yeah. So let me clarify something there. So the lead check swab reacts in the presence of lead. That doesn't mean it's lead-based paint. The only way to know if you have lead-based paint is to use an XRF gun, X-ray fluorescence. Okay. And it literally is. It's a nu- It's got a little nuclear cell in it. I mean, you got to have a license from the uh, Illinois, what is it, uh, Emergency Management, IEMA, to have a license to have an XRF gun. That will shoot through the paint and it can go through 13 14 layers doesn't matter and it'll bounce back a number and that will confirm the presence and this is where the key is presence of lead based paint a lead check swab only tells you that lead is present okay where the difference is is that if you have an xrf testing done on your property 
you must disclose that when you go to sell, when you go to move, whatever. It has to be disclosed. If a license tester does it, he usually notifies the county huh. that the house has lead. Mm -hmm. And that makes the sale of that home a little more difficult, mm -hmm. and it may reduce its value. A lead check swab, what makes those great is that it just turns red or pink in the presence of lead. So you haven't confirmed that your house has lead-based paint. What you have confirmed is that lead is present. And there's a huge legal dis distinction between the two. Okay. So we typically tell, what I, when I taught, was don't test. If the house was built in 1978 or earlier, assume lead may be present and follow the work, lead safe work practices. Mm -hmm. And this right. is where the training got interesting. Ron, when yes, you sir. work on a house, even if it was four years old, and I asked you to take out a wall or strip the plaster off like you did in the wall behind me, uh -huh. would you not put covers when you cover the floor? Oh, sure. Yeah, we're going to put, put the, you know, the tarps down, whatever, plastic the floors off, tape it all up. Or we like using that RAM board now. I don't know if you've seen that. Yeah, yeah. It's no, a thick card, it. cardboard. Um, mm -hmm. And that, that's really durable stuff, too. So, yeah, we protect the floors, and then we, you know, we take everything down. No. So I just, I just came in this door, this right. one over here. Yeah. Um, but that door at the end of the hallway, if yep. the work area is confined to this hallway, would you not close off the other doorways? Sure. We'd plastic it off and, and yeah. seal, seal it all so up. So that the dust doesn't migrate through the rest of the house. Right. And then we've got this those air, air, uh, air scrubbers, too, that we put in to sure. control the dust. And that was the fascinating thing about being a trainer for the EPA, that I had to stand there and tell people to protect a work area so that dust didn't migrate from the work area into other parts of the home. Mm -hmm. you, any good contractor is going to do that. <laughs> But not every contractor is going to do that. You're right. Yep. So if you've got a contractor who's not closing off your work areas and maintaining an environment where only the work area is what's contaminated, you got the wrong contractor. I'll tell you mm -hmm. that right out of the gate. Right. So, so but that becomes more really important when it, when the, and it's an older home and it is pre 78 because now yep. you're containing those potential, uh, de you know, dust particles and, and whatnot. So that that way, you know, it, it's not spreading throughout the whole house. Right. So on, instead of using tarps and ram board in an older home, we, you can still use the ram board to protect, like, the wood floor, you know, if you're not taking that out. Mm -hmm. But you should be using some, any kind of plastic, a visqueen. Right. You know, three, four mil visqueen. You roll it all out. You run it down, tape it to the floor. You do all your demolition, and you pick it up. Now, this is the other key issue. You don't have to leave that plastic down for the duration of the job. You only want the plastic down through the, throughout demo. Mm -hmm. Once you've completed demo, remove trim, remove plaster, remove the, you know, all the baseboard and the casings, put it on the floor, roll it up in the plastic, tape it up with duct tape, take it out to the dumpster, boom, done. Mm -hmm. Then we ask you to go back and clean the floors. And again, Sonner, you said you vacuumed your floors. Yep. Yeah, right yeah. before so I painted everything, I wiped everything down. You said uh, to use um, the uh, the vinegar. So mm -hmm. I wiped everything down with the vinegar. I mean, the, the Navy taught me how to uh, prepare a, a, a spot for, for new paint. You know, you just, right? leave, you just leave the curls on, you know, all that. No, we, <laughs> we, we cleaned everything up. We, we wiped it down. We vacuumed everything. And then we just put that new... Um, uh, oh, what is it? Uh, uh, not acrylic. It was the um, the, uh, the oil based. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, just an oil based trim paint. Mm -hmm. and that's that's the perfect way to go. Now, the only thing I'm going to warn you about vacuuming though is that unless you have a vacuum with a HEPA filter, you know. Yeah, we Ron, used a, what's we HEPA used a, stand a, for? Dirt uh, Devil. Yeah. <laughs> with it. Yeah. But if it doesn't have a HEPA filter, I mean, don't go out there. You know, you don't want to just grab a uh, shop vac. And if you go into the box stores for the shop vacs, they sell. HEPA filters, they're not, the filter might be rated as a high efficiency filter, mm -hmm. but it doesn't seal where it goes on to the mount. You know, it's not airtight all the way around. So, and you know that because you're always getting dust blowing out the motor housing, right? That's why after it's three years old, they scream because it's all getting in the motor. <laughs> right. So, you know, you've got to use a HEPA rated vacuum. So there's a number of models out there that are well suited for that. But you simple, pick up your plastic, dispose of that. Vacuum the floor with a HEPA vac. Mop it down with us. We just use Swiffers. 
mm-hmm. wet Swiffers, and you just clean the floor. Demo's done. You have removed the lead danger from the house. Lead potential lead. Yes, potential the potential lead. lead. <clears throat> if you want to want right. to play law? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And from there, the rest of your work proceeds as normal. And Ron and I will both tell you that's why you watch a makeover show on any network, uh-huh. and they just walk in there with a sledgehammer, and start blowing holes in the walls. It's crazy. Yep. And then, especially where they're trying to flip them. Uh-huh. You don't know who the next family is going to be. If that family has children under six, you potentially just put them all at risk. Mm-hmm. So, and that's why I won't buy a flip. You know what I mean? Like, no, I, if somebody had a, a house for sale, like, oh yeah, we just remodeled it. <laughs> no, thank you. Right. I'll take the hundred year old farmhouse that needs all the work over right. a flip. Any. Well, and but, they did actually nail uh, someplace a uh, show that was out in Texas. And they actually uh, ended up having to pay the, the EPA fines because they were, yeah. they were doing that. So they actually did get it. I, but that's only one show out of how many on, on TV and, and the internet oh, where they do that. Mm-hmm. So um, it's not, they, they, they could be do a lot more. There's evidence right there. Flip on any show and you're going to be able to see it. So Right. No, I, I think it's really important that, that people learn to do it and do it properly. Mm-hmm. Um, the, yeah, the lead safe certified firm, that's went into effect 2010. So 10 years we've been doing this, and I'll be honest, I haven't seen anybody in my area do it. Right. But we don't have a lot of pre-78. We do have a number of them, but not, not a lot of remodels, mostly teardowns. Right. So, But again, if your house is built before 78, you're looking to hire a contractor, make sure they're an EPA-certified firm. Yep. Make sure they've done the lead-safe training. Uh, it's, just, it's for the protection of your own family. Right. Hey, Sonar, do you have that one uh, picture of yeah. the whole house, the exterior? Oh, where they, yeah. Let me find that. I think I think I had that as a as a, a background, okay. but I can change it. Um, I don't know if you can. We find can get it out of the quick. basement. <laughs> no, 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 no. I just want to pop it up in the middle between us, just so you can you can see the difference. I think that's it. Yeah, there you go. So pop that puppy in there. Look at that. So now they've got plastic up all over the ground to catch any Mm -hmm. as they're cleaning and and, uh, prepping the walls. They've got it over the windows. So good. That's a great example of just how easy this is to do. You put the plastic down, you scrape the walls, you sand the walls, whatever you've got to do to get all that paint off, right? And sanding is not really the best way because it gets airborne. But if your sander is connected to a HEPA vac, it's perfectly legal, Yep. right? There's certain steps. You just don't want to be out there pressure washing that that puts all the lead and debris into your soil yep but once you scrape all that down and get it cleaned up and prime you know you can pick up all that plastic now you right. can go to standard drop cloths yep you know but you don't want to use drop cloths throughout the project because if you contaminate drop cloths on one job and then you take them over to somebody else's house their house may not have had a lead problem until you got there <laughs> until you brought it in so you brought it in and right. people don't think about that. You know, right. if somebody walks in with a canvas drop cloth, well, what was the last house you worked on? If it was pre 78, they're not coming in my house, mm-hmm. you know, or when was the last time they were laundered? Oh yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know I mean? Cause you can go to a commercial laundry and get drop cloths clean, but mm-hmm. not anyway, really I don't know. Do you have any, any I, yeah. since we don't have the live audience, uh, Sonar got any questions? Well, that's how it was with yeah. ours. So if you look at the, at the stairs, that's how. That's essentially the spot that the chair rubbed across. Was this just something like that? Where right and, in here? Yeah, and ours, our paint doesn't look like that. It didn't look like the uh, alligator the alligator stuff. So you see the stuff on the walls. That's alligator stuff. We can see what's going on there, but the ones on the stairs. That looks like it's been painted over with modern paint over and over again. Yep. And so, it probably has, and that's the whole point. And that's why we tell people not to sand to refinish things because it might have originally had a lead-based paint on it in the 20s. But maybe in the 40s, 50s, 60s, it could have seven coats of safe paint over it. Yep. But it's once you sand through that safe paint, you hit the lead-based paint, you've created the issue. Right. So, again... If it's something you can easily remove, you're better off taking it somewhere and having it chemically stripped instead of doing it yourself. Oh, you know? Okay, so if I'm not doing a full, I'm not doing a full overhaul. I'm not doing anything. Maybe I've got just a little little scratch. Maybe uh, some 
something rubbed up against for some, we all have chair rails we all have, have mm -hmm. something like that what well, is just three inch uh, uh gouge in the paint all the way down to the wood what do, what do i do just as a homeowner to kind of to, to kind of prepare myself or kind of prepare the spot without contaminating the rest of the well, house the nice thing is if you have a gouge there you don't need to sand it out you need to fill it Mm -hmm. So you take some, you know, good filler that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Right. And you fill it with that. You let it dry and you just give it a very light sanding and you're not sanding into the paint. You're only taking off the filler and then just go ahead and repaint it. Right. So the idea is not to sand the scratch out or the gouge is mm -hmm. fill it. Right. You know, where we run into problems with remodelers is pulling off casings to replace windows. We'll, rep we'll pull casings, sills, stops to get the sashes out. We're disturbing the hell out of lead-based paint to get that off because we're breaking all those layers of paints to get those stops out. Right. And, and again, again it's not the chunks. It's, it's the dust. Yes. Yeah. But again, if you do all your demo, take all your windows out, you can clean everything, work from the top down. You can pick up your plastic. From that point on, you're done with the lead safe work practice. Everything's clean. Right. So you're saying you're I not... could just take a like a trash bag or something, put it under what I'm I'm working on, uh, pre prep the area of paint, make sure there's none of the curls or none of the the mm -hmm. extra flyaways coming off of it, and then just what three four coats and and we're good. Uh, after after I take everything away. Oh, no, okay. I mean, if yeah. you've got the plastic on the floor, once you do the the strip off whatever you need to then you can pick up the plastic and then you go to a standard drop cloth and the then trick here is to, is to put do paint over demo it, two coats then. and you're done yeah two coats over it encapsulated encapsulation safer than anything ron and i'll say if we get in older homes and if we found out that there was lead present in paint on the walls i wouldn't demo the plaster a great example is the picture behind us mm -hmm. somebody spent a lot of money and a lot of time taking all that plaster off yeah, the walls right here Look at that. You can see all the wood lath. Now, right. if you wanted to add electric and you had to channel the walls or do something like that, maybe you could only do one side. But the easiest way to fix that is quarter-inch drywall, and they make contact cement for that. You roll on the wall, you roll it on a sheet of drywall, you stick it to the wall, boom, done. It's encapsulated. Now you tape it like standard drywall, yep. and you're done. No no problem. Okay. Right. The room got a half-inch smaller, but... <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think another important thing to say here is there uh, EPA has a training program for contractors, uh, remodelers, for uh, landlords. The, those those classes are out there for you to take. And um, it, I think EPA.gov, you can find more in mm -hmm. Lead Safe Practices. Do a quick search for that. If you want to go take the full course, this does not qualify as that Lead Safe Practices course. We're missing a lot of the pieces to it. But this is just Well, an that was an eight hour course plus the hands on. So Sure. Sure. So it's um, and and everybody should do it. And and if you're working in older homes, it's it's uh, it's something you really want to go take a class, go learn about it, and right. it'll open your eyes to what's going on. And you might start to recognize some of that stuff as you're walking through a project and you're gonna know that you're up against it before you even pull one tool out of yes. your truck because you're going to see the signs for it. And I just hope you get a decent trainer. I think what made me a little better was the fact that I was also in the trades. Sure. So I was not going to stand there. I could tell you what the EPA says you must do or should do. And some of it just can't be done exactly per the way it's written. But sure. if you kind of know what you're doing and you can work with it, it works just fine. And I trained EPA inspectors and I trained a lot of different people yeah. for that reason because it made it more understandable. Right. So more logical because it's actually it, somebody has actually applied that in, on, mm -hmm. on, on a project and knows how to do it. So, well, and the last thing that just popped in my head too is that when we do a project and it's pre 78, we have to fill out paperwork stating what we did, mm -hmm. how we did it, what type of containment used, what type of cleaning methods, what type of clearance we did, which was. The useless card, but, right? You know the blood test. <laughs> yep. It was still better than nothing. And actually, most of the contractors that have been fined by the EPA it was not for the way they worked. It was for lack of documentation. Mm -hmm. So the paperwork's a big part of it. But if you just had a major remodel done on your house and you have proof that it was all done with lead safe work practices, and you believe that it truly was, selling it to the next family with children under six shouldn't bother you. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. That's so, all I got. That's all you got. All right. That's well, all I, I think you need to go back to work. You, you know, you, you can you can head out that door there and get back to work. Cause, <laughs> okay. See, look at that. 
right. <laughs> Want to say thanks to the Niles Design District. And hey, Rich, you still there? Come on back. Where'd you go? <laughs> so we'll be back next thanks, week. Ron. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I'm not sure exactly what we'll have for you next week, but uh, we'll find oh, no. something fun to talk about. And uh, I want to say thanks again. Subscribe. Hit that. Click that uh, bell at the bottom. And, and if uh, you have any questions about lead safe work, just send me an email. Rich at mightyhouse.net. We'll get you pointed in the right direction. Exactly. Exactly. So with that, I'll say keep it square and level. Until, Until next time. time. Until next time. There you go. All right. I like this. This is this is a nice a nice house they put us in today. And, you know, <laughs> we don't get to see this all the time. It's warmer than my house right now. Yeah. Well, it might be a little breezy here, but I don't know. Located on Milwaukee Avenue, the Niles Design District is a home improvement destination for consumers, designers, and contractors. For those looking to renovate a kitchen or a bathroom, expand with a new addition, or enhance their curb appeal, the Niles Design District in Niles, Illinois offers everything in one convenient location. It's your road to a better home.